there was a lot made in spring training and in the early part of this season about what the identity would be for this Padres team in 2024, especially coming off the disappointment of 2023. And at least early on, there has been a clear identity at this point of a team that does not give up, that doesn't stop fighting, that doesn't get down and and just fold. The Padres won this game here tonight. It was their third win in the last seven games after trailing by three or more runs. And by the way, that doesn't even include uh, the ball game uh, last night. Was it last night? I'm trying to remember correctly. Were they down? No, they were not down by three runs last night. They were down three to one in last night's game. But that doesn't include last night's game where the Padres were down and had to rally. But again, the third win in the last seven games where the Padres trailed by three or more runs and came back, found a way to win it. A couple of notes on this ball game. The offense here tonight. Obviously, this game changed with the six-run fifth inning. And the Padres, once again, much like they did last night in L.A., found a way to take advantage of walks and miscues by the opposition. Remember, the Padres walked 14 times last night. Early in the game last night, they didn't take much advantage of that. But here tonight, they, they did. They found a way. Uh, notably, the fourth inning starts with a walk to Luis Campusano. Uh, and there were some other miscues, especially in that fifth inning, by the Brewers. And the Padres, again, just put the ball in play. We said it a couple of nights ago. There is a magic to just putting the ball in play. The Padres had those hits in the fifth inning, six hits in that fifth inning. All of them were singles. And like I said, 11 of the Padres' 12 hits in this game were singles. So they didn't use the long ball. They didn't have a ton of extra base hits. But what they did was put the ball in play, put some pressure on the defense, and the Padres found a way to keep on moving the line. And sometimes, on some nights, You're going to have to do it that way. You're not going to rely on the home run. And the Padres did a great job in this game of just putting the ball in play, moving the line, and finding a way to put together a rally. And they've done that pretty nicely through the first 19 games. And when you can do that, it gives you a real opportunity to mount rallies and comebacks in games, which they did once again here tonight. Another key part of this game was Joe Musgrove, who really battled in this game. I mean, you look at his final line, this was a quality start for Joe. Six innings, three earned runs given up, seven hits, walked four, struck out three, 94 pitches. Joe was a little up and down early on. It it was a bit of a struggle. Gives up one run in the first inning, gives up the two-run home run to Churio in the second inning. Padres fall behind 3-0, and the outing wasn't going well for Joe. But to his credit, he really battled through six innings of three-run ball. A quality start by the definition. You look at the third inning. Two on, nobody out. Gives up a single, a walk. That's how the Brewers get two on, nobody out. Ends up getting out of the inning. Battles his way out of it. The fourth inning really settles in. A one, two, three frame. Walks two in the fifth inning, but... Again, timing is everything. Gets a double play ball off the bat of Reese Hoskins to get out of that inning. And then a 1-2-3 sixth inning. So even after the first two innings, there were some hits. There were some walks. It wasn't the best version of Joe Musgrove uh, that you'll see. But he found a way through. It was one of those sort of classic Joe Musgrove outings where there's some trouble early on. Maybe didn't have his best stuff tonight, but he found a way to deliver a quality outing. And at the end of the day, the Brewers got three runs in the first two innings. They didn't end up scoring again. So, look, Joe did his job in this game after it was a 3-0 game. He kept it at a 3-0 deficit and allowed his team to rally, come back, and win this game. And, and again, six innings, three runs given up for Joe. That's not a bad start. That's a quality start, right? So he did a good job and probably didn't have his best stuff here today. So uh, good on Joe. Did a good job battling through it. Uh, you look at what the bullpen did here tonight. Eniel De Los Santos, the scoreless seventh inning. Stephen Kolek was good. Uh, the one, two, three, eighth inning. Got the first two outs of the ninth inning. Then runs into trouble. A single, a walk. It does force the Padres to go to Robert Suarez on a night where I'm sure Mike Schilt would have loved Stephen Kolek to get through Uh, that ninth inning, and not have to go to Suarez for a second straight night. They did have to go to him. We'll see how that 
either does or doesn't impact Suarez's availability throughout, uh, well, not the rest of the series, but at least for tomorrow. Interested to to see that. Um, so they did have to use Suarez, but you get it from Mike Schultz's perspective. Look, once that becomes a save situation and once the tying runs on deck, you can't mess around, not with the middle of the Brewers lineup uh, coming up there. So you totally got it. Here's the interesting thing about Suarez. He continues to throw exclusively fastballs. Here are the last five outings for Robert Suarez as far as the pitches he's thrown. Here tonight in Milwaukee, four-seam fastball and a sinker. He threw nine pitches, a couple of sinkers, mostly four-seam fastballs. Twelve pitches in the outing before that, mostly four-seamers, a couple of sinkers. Again, versions of fastballs, right? The sinker. The three outings before that, all four-seam fastballs, all four-seam fastballs, all four-seam fastballs. The three outings before that. So the last five outings for Robert Suarez, and he continues to be really good. He has thrown no change-ups, no slider, nothing off speed. Just a a few sinkers, and for the most part, all four-seamers. He is totally relying on the fastball right now. So look, it's working. He's getting the job done, right? So it's going to be fascinating to see how long Robert Suarez goes without throwing a change-up or a slider or anything else other than a sinker or a four-seamer. But uh, he continues to do a good job. Suarez already uh, now in 19 games, his sixth save of the season. And I do want to mention something that I really should have mentioned in the opening segment, and that is the continued outstanding performance by Jackson Merrill. Merrill here tonight, three more hits. He went three for five. Two RBIs, had a two-run single as part of that six-run fifth inning. How about this? Jackson Merrill's batting average now through the first 59 at-bats of his major league career is 356. He's got a 433 on base percentage in 19 games to start his major league career. He's been outstanding, and a lot of those hits have been singles, but the quality of the at-bats have been really good consistently, and for a 20-year-old to do what he's doing, continually put the ball in play, continually find ways to drive in runs when he has opportunities, Man, he continues to be awfully impressive. Three more hits. He has back-to-back three-hit games. Again, any way you want to slice it. Considering Jackson Merrill's age and his limited experience at the upper levels of the minor leagues, entering this opportunity, entering this season at 20 years old, the fact that he's hitting 356 in nearly 60 at-bats to begin his career with a 433 on on-base percentage, Padres fans, you got to be really excited about what you got in Merrill. And the defense as well has been really good in center. He has more than held his own. So both offensively and defensively, he continues to be great. And no doubt about it, Jackson Merrill, a big part of tonight's win. He continues to be one of the really, really great storylines, not just with the Padres, but I think throughout Major League Baseball uh, in the early part of this season.